You've got to tune to the afternoon show. It's listener-powered KEXP. Kevin Cole with you, and you just heard music from Colexico. The song Bullets and Rocks from Edge of the Sun, right before that band of horses with Funeral, and started off the set with music from Chris Bell, a seven-inch single he has called I Am the Cosmos. And it's all here on the afternoon show again. Uh, Kevin Cole with you down in the uh, performance space and uh, just am so pleased and excited to have Iron and Wine live on the show. Hey, Kevin. Welcome. Thank you. It's great to be back. Yeah, it's great having you here. And I think first time in the new home. Yeah, I was... I like what you've done with the place. It's good, right? <laughs> nice. <laughs> so um, do you mind introducing the band, Sam? And sure. And then uh, going into a couple songs? Sure. I've got uh, some, some new friends around. This is um, on the piano and singing is my good friend, Miss Eliza Hardy-Jones. Over on the cello is Mr. Teddy Rankin-Parker. On the bass is Mr. Sebastian Steinberg. And behind the drums and also singing her heart out is Miss Beth Goodfellow. Welcome. Well, it's great to have you all here uh, in the studio again, Iron and Wine, doing a sold-out show at the Moore Theater tonight and uh, doing a show for everybody right now on KEXP. Say it's here where our pieces fall in place In it rain Softly kisses us on the face In the wind means we're running We can sleep and see them coming Where we drift and call it dreaming We can weep and call it song is called About a Bruise. Oh, we believe the garden Sunday clothes don't fool me The sky is full of our prayer Prayer When you were making 
making moonlight from all cops and mobile the night fell from their eyes from their eyes this is borrowed stone i'd help you let your hair down point to birds then you'd say bang bang about a bruise or walking into water after dark your papa saw me coming blood knows when it's worth it all you said you said like a song a song jesus left the best friend mine says forget her this field is waiting for wind <laughs> Get it? Uh -huh. All right, come on. Ring a bell that's broken. That sound is loud inside us, flowing farther away, far away. Tenderness to you was only talk about a bruise. Walking into water after dark. Love can last a lifetime. This is Alabama, and it will is forgiving the road, the road. Whoa, whoa. Now you're making music for beautiful people by the sea who don't need a song, need a song. Tenderness to you is all it's all built by the proof. This is Alabama. A lot of joy and playfulness in that song. <laughs> we try. <laughs> Iron and Wine, live on the afternoon show. A sold out show tonight at the Moore Theater, as I mentioned, playing in uh, Eugene tomorrow at McDonald Theater and then in Portland at the Aladdin Theater on uh, Friday night. So, Sam, it's been uh, four years since the last studio album, Ghost on Ghost, and, uh, but you've been really pretty busy, at yeah. least on paper. On paper. <laughs> <laughs> Much better than in life. <laughs> You've released a, a rarities collection called uh, Archive Series Volume 1 that kind of rarities around the first album. Mm -hmm. uh, a covers album with uh, our friend uh, Ben Bridwell. Yeah. Uh, a duets record with Jessica Hoop. And you started a record label. <laughs> yeah. And now I have this new album um, that is, uh, is really beautiful, uh, Beast Epic, that is kind of a return to more of a stripped-down sound. And I was wondering if working on the Archive series yeah. and uh, those earlier songs had anything to do with kind of informing the approach you took on, on the new record. It definitely did, yeah. Actually, all three of those projects had a lot to do with it. Um, yeah, revisiting old material, um, <laughs> You know, hearing myself and what my voice naturally does uh, as a team player in those other collaborative projects, you know, just sort of let me take a breath and say, you know what, it's okay to stop to stop searching for this new, always looking around the corners. Just let's just enjoy being in the moment that we're in. Um, and so, yeah, they were they were all really influential. Had, had you felt like? Uh, like that, like you weren't necessarily in the moment or just kind of breathing into the songs, uh, you know, with a different approach or in the last couple? Um, I mean, I feel like I'm just kind of a restless artist, creative type anyway. You know, you're always looking for something Got new it. rather than um, just sitting and cooking in <laughs> what yeah. you've already made. It's about discovery, really, the process for me. Yeah, to what extent uh, do the nature of the songs themselves kind of inform the approach or sound you take? Well, it's funny that you say that, because I think that had a lot to do with the sound of this record, too. I think they were they were really introspective songs, and I feel like I wanted to showcase that by, you know, making the, the sonic atmosphere a little bit quieter, yeah. a little more subservient to what the song was saying, 
when sometimes in the past it's been fun to create contrast, you yeah. know, be having a, a gentle message, but, but put in this kind of raucous, strange musical atmosphere says something different than if you have like these gentle um, acoustic guitars. And so I've enjoyed playing with that in the past, but I also enjoyed playing, you know, just a softer side and showcase what the songs were about. Yeah, it's it's a, a beautiful sounding album and uh, one that uh, gets you to focus on the lyrics. Mm. The singing also stands out, but mm, also thanks. it's a lot about a vibe, I think. Yeah, it's a vibe. Um, there's also a lot of, of dissonance in it, too. You know, playing with that kind of the combination of these softer sounds and also some, you know, sonic dissonance. But at the same time, the approach is a gentle a quieter, more meditative record. Yeah, you know. yeah, I get that, uh, listening to it. Um, you recorded it mostly live, I think. Yeah, it was all live, yeah, a couple uh, overdubs and stuff. but And uh, using the uh, Wilco's Loft Studio in Chicago. Yeah, we got the keys. Nice. <laughs> Does that inform the sound too, or do you go, hey, I got these ideas and I want to go to this studio because I know it's the right environment? Um... I think there are people who do that. Yeah. <laughs> I got the keys and it seemed like a great idea because a lot of the people I was playing with were in Chicago, um, so they just had to walk down the street. Nice. And um, But it also created a vibe, like you say. Um, it's a real cozy studio and um, I think it informs a lot of the sound of the record. I wanted a human sounding record and I enjoy humans playing together, not on computer. I mean, I like computer music too, don't get me wrong, but for what I was trying to achieve with this record, I thought it was really important to have takes. You weren't going after a Giorgio Moroder or <laughs> LCD sound system I was, approach. but just not very <laughs> successfully, so I just gave up. It wasn't the time for the, the uh, Iron and Wine disco album. Uh, yeah, man, just mark your calendar there. Uh, that, I can't wait. Um, so, uh, what about the band then? Like, um, perform live primarily so do you put the the right players together your sort of dream team and then go in this is a highly trained <laughs> group of commando assassin <laughs> musicians yeah yeah <laughs> sonic death team <laughs> yeah uh that's the that's the trick it's to find people that you enjoy the sounds that that they make give them some space to express themselves and also just yeah there's a lot of serendipity involved you know you just hope for the right combination of of spirits and mm -hmm. sometimes it works yeah um you said something really interesting about the new album where you you describe it as or, or said that the uh, beauty and pain of growing up after you, you've already grown up that's how you kind of <laughs> described it yeah the beauty and pain of growing up after you've already grown up and that's that's a cool line and i was wondering if you could explain what you were oh sure i mean i just remember being a I mean, I'm not, I'm hardly old, <laughs> but I was younger at one point. Um, and You've I been making out like 15 years though, right? Yeah, it's been yeah. a minute. It's been yeah, a minute. that's good. <laughs> I mean, you're young. Yeah, but, yeah, but I try. good experience. <laughs> I try. Uh, but, you know, I remember being younger and, and having this idea that there was some doorway that you would eventually pass through and be able to look back and say, oh, well, now I got it all figured out. But you don't, you just realize there's another door beyond that, another door, and you just keep on walking over hills and... Um, and so that's what a lot of the record's about, um, uh, how the journey keeps going um, and you can celebrate your victories and understand the losses too. Yeah, th that's kind of the beauty of uh, evolving or yeah. aging, right? In that uh, I don't know anybody or many who would say they <coughs> would want to go back. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. You know. Um, it seem to work that way. And you certainly have a different perspective like in your 20s. Yeah. Uh, but then uh, you realize it is kind of... Uh, an evolution and yeah, yeah. you get to carry with you all that you've experienced. Yeah, yeah. It would be cool to be able to go back and tell the 20-year-old me what you knew, but I'm not sure he would listen. Yeah, what, what, what might you say? <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on tight. Yeah. So um, you've packed a lot in those years of making music, and you also now have five daughters. Yeah. How mm -hmm. does that influence it? the music that you make? Well, I mean, it influences my whole life, my whole perspective yeah. on being alive. Uh, and so inevitably that filters its way into the songs. Um, uh, it's hard to say specifically because, you know, I don't know who I would be without them. Yeah. Um, what about the changing political climate? Like as, as a DJ, <clears throat> um, through the Obama years, I couldn't play uh, certain records like... Uh, 
the Beastie Boys um, to the Five Boroughs. And I, I played that uh, a couple of weeks ago again because I realized, you know, this was sort of a Bush record at the mm. time um, and really a political statement. And, uh, um, and again, it didn't sound right during a different era and then it suddenly sounds good again. Mm. Um, and I wondered to what extent as an artist that may... You, you might look back at some of your songs that were maybe written at certain times because I know you had said about The Shepherd's Dog that it wasn't necessarily a political album or songs, but some of those songs related to what was going on in the world. Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't really a, a political statement, but I think my whole perspective and what informed a lot of the dark, surreal imagery on that, um, uh, on that record was born out of just growing up and feeling like you understood the people around you in a in a way, uh, but then when Bush got reelected and I saw later all these like obviously things yeah, going yeah. wrong, I realized that I didn't understand people around me. It's this, you know, feeling the floor come out from under you, and so that's how a lot of those more darker imagery, uh, the more darker image, images on that record came about, and so it was born out of like a political confusion. But yeah, it was hardly a political record. The next album's going to be really dark. <laughs> <laughs> it's the strangest thing is I feel like it, things are so surreal now that it's almost boring to say. You know, it's almost like ridiculous yeah. to, to point at at a at the color red and say that's red. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's almost yeah, you're uh, lying. debilitating. Where I'd rather talk about something good. Yeah. So yeah. So for me, I was wondering as an artist, uh, do you then? Did, did those songs sound out of place or weird for you for a while and then you can bring them back when you... Uh... Um, they, it's, you know, I don't know if they they sound weird or out of place, but they definitely um, have different weight and different gravity, yeah, depending on what's going on in my personal life or, or with the you know, sort of broader social, you know, uh, landscape. <laughs> you know, it's, yeah, it's different. They, 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 they bring different things to the table as they age and as we age, I mean, just like most of the people in your life, most of the relationships in your yeah. life. Do you ever find that uh, songs reveal themselves later? Yeah, yeah, for better or for worse. Yeah, <laughs> where suddenly it's like, oh, no. It, and it could be just your perspective changing, as you mentioned. Yeah, I think it's what we bring to them, yeah. Yeah. It's Iron and Wine live on the afternoon show. Um, the uh, live shows that you're doing on this tour are... Uh, Obviously, a lot from the new record, but are you pulling from? Uh... Yeah, yeah, we pull, do a lot of old, nice. dust off a lot of old songs. It's fun to, um, especially with a new group of musicians, to uh, bring an old song to um, a group that doesn't have the same history with it that I that I have, and see what they nice. they bring um, out of me. It's fun. Yeah. It's, it's a lot of fun. Well, looking forward to uh, to the show, and uh, again, Iron and Wine new album is uh, is wonderful. It's called Beast Epic, and uh, do you mind playing a few more? Sure. Thanks for the kind words, Kevin. Oh, you bet. <laughs> this one's called Summer Clouds. Summer clouds blowing up and down the stair By the end, we'll take music from the board Give it back, shine broken Cold. I was waiting there for you Raised your glass and the scars fell off my heart We threw a stone but we never There are clouds keeping quiet every night 
By the end, we'll hold something to hide to ever come back down. By the end, there's a song we will sing, man, for someone else. By the end, we live somewhere too long to ever wander back. By the end, we give someone too much to ever close the hand. Summer clouds doing good for going gray. Tell me where all this love fits in the world. You can lie, give me all. song is called Thomas Keone Law. It's about being from a small town, accepting and rejecting your own origins, <laughs> <laughs> which is a unique, maybe unique, but it's definitely a common American experience. Also playing out of tune is a common American experience. <laughs> out here in wine live on the afternoon show. Don't belong here 
but I know I do Nobody looks away when the sun goes down Nobody looks away when the sun goes down Beautiful. It's Iron and Wine live on the afternoon show. Thomas County Law and uh, Summer Clouds, two songs from the uh, new album, Beast Epic. Beautiful sounding record that I uh, forgot to mention is on Sub Pop. Yeah, yeah. Back, back on Sub Pop. Back with my buddies. That's great. <laughs> so uh, thank you so much for, uh, for taking time out of the day to uh, play thank for you. KXP. Thank you, Kevin. It's always a pleasure to be back. Yeah, it's great having you here. So uh, again, Iron and Wine playing at the Moor tonight. That show is sold out. And then down in uh, Eugene on Thursday, Portland on Friday, and a whole bunch of people here to thank. Uh, first of all, thank you all again. Yeah, thank you, yeah. And then uh, helping out, we got Jim, Justin, and Scott on video, uh, Allie taking photos, Kevin Suggs engineering, Greta running the board, and Nancy and John doing hospitality, and a huge thanks to all the KEXP donors who make uh, in-studio sessions like this one with Iron and Wine possible. It's the afternoon show, KEXP. Nice work, team. Thanks. Thanks, Kevin. Thank you so much. Thank and thanks, Kevin. <laughs> yeah.